Yeah. Today we're talking about some bobbers. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 30 day video challenge. And today we are actually gonna be talking about three ways you can rig up your bobber, specifically with this bobber right here. This is the three in one bobber by Rod and Bobs. It's a spring bobber, but it's also a full on slip bobber. If you see through the middle there, the uh, middle of the bobber is hollowed out so you can uh, put a line through that. Today I'm gonna show you three ways to rig this up with a live minnow. I'm only gonna fish one way with it, which is the regular slip bobber setup. Put it through the grommet, through that middle of the bobber there. But there, there are three ways you can rig this. So let's, uh, let's get started. I get these questions a lot about, especially with people that are first time into fishing in general. So I figured I'd do a full on video talking about the three ways you can do it. All right, so there's two slip styles that you can use. First one is this. These are the uh, rubber bobber stops. There's also, these are also used for like a, a Texas rig or a Carolina rig setup. They're about a dollar for a pack like this. Nine, usually you can find them in like, you can find these in Walmart or some sort of uh, sporting goods store for about a buck. The other one is something like this. Most of you guys probably know this, this is like a slip knot style yarn. Uh, works really well. Again, these are probably about a dollar or two. You can find them uh, at your local sporting goods store or Walmart or something. Speaking of that, these new rod and bobs are going to be available. Uh, I think starting at the end of end of September, they're going to be in Walmart. Um, you can also get them online at rodandbobs.com. Uh, but check them out. Today, I'm actually going to be using. I'm a fan of these. I'm really a fan of of these uh, rubber bobber stops. People ask, do they get stuck in the reel? Do they get stuck in the eyelets? If you have big eyelets like this on the, uh, the ACC, this is the eight footer that I'm holding here. If you have bigger eyelets like that, you shouldn't have a problem. If you got the micro eyelets, I think either way you go, you're gonna have problems with it, uh, getting, getting caught in the eyelet. A trick when you do hook up with a fish, and I'm gonna show you later today, is when you get to that, that slip, um, instead of just keeping it reeling, because the smallest eyelet is on the rod tip, uh, you actually give it a little bit of a slack and then reel up, and that helps keep that, that little slip stop in its place, uh, so you don't actually reel through the slip stop where it actually slides down closer to your bobber, and then you gotta reset the depth. Um, but we're gonna tie this one on first. Ooh. Also, I would recommend a 1,000 size or larger reel. Um, some guys use the 500, sometimes those smaller reels, the, both the rubber bobber stops and the yarn stops do get stuck in them. So I recommend at least a thousand size reel. Today I'm using the PC Fun Honor XT 1000 size reel. This is probably, probably the most common one that I use uh, for panfish is the 1000 size, either the Honor or the Carbon X or something like that. All right, so here we go. First step is, so these ones have a little wire. They're attached to a little wire here. And there's a little loop. Now I've used it before, so the loop is really small. But there's a little loop, and all you gotta do is put the line through that micro loop. I recommend if uh, you got trouble seeing, get like some sort of magnifying lens, because that is a small little loop to put them in. And then all you do, so you got the loop, the line sliding through there. Just pull that, hold this part, pull that bead to where the line doubles back on itself. And then all you gotta do is pull it all the way over that tag end of the line. And it pops on just like that. And there we go, we got our bobber stop. Uh, the yarn ones work. I just, I personally just like these because sometimes the yarn slips a little bit. It can loosen up. These ones I know uh, they're, they're gonna be stuck wherever I put them, you know, they're, they're gonna be stuck there on that line, so. The next step, so here, here's what I got hooked up. Where is it? This one. This is my regular, or the uh, classic slips, slip bobber style. Already got this one rigged up. So as you can see through the grommet there, the line is already running through the grommet, through the middle of that grommet. And so it's sliding up and down the line like this. 
with the three-in-one bobber, there's actually three ways you can rig this. If we were fishing shallow water, let's say in the springtime when these crappie are spawning, I can use, let's see if we can zoom in on that. There's two notches here, okay? There's two plastic notches on this thing. And that, that top notch, or the one closest to the big part of the bobber, that notch is meant for a fixed position. So all you would have to do, notch, and you're just gonna slide it in there just like that. And then it's locked into place, okay? So if I'm fishing probably, let's say I'm fishing in six feet of water or shallower, I know I'm not gonna put this bobber probably deeper than about four feet. Um, you could probably use the fixed position where it's stuck in place, it's not sliding up and down. That's great for pretty much the springtime. Most of the rest of the season, summer, fall, winter, uh, you're gonna be using the slip style. So the second notch here, close that, but see it allows the bobber to slide up and down the line like this. And uh, that's what's really good about these style of bobbers. Gives you that option. You can either put it through the middle of the grommet or slide it up and down like this. I know people say, well, what happens if I don't want to fish with a bobber anymore so that it's, it's removable. It's still going to slide up and down the line, but it's removable. The next two steps are split shots. And again, these are probably, I think these are about $2, two to three bucks for a pack like this, maybe a little more. Um, these are 16th ounce split shots. Pretty typical, you can find them pretty much anywhere. I'll leave a link to everything in the video description below, don't worry. And then these are zone lock hooks. Your zone lock Aberdeen hooks, size one. Cool thing about these zone lock hooks, they got a little extra bend in the, uh, near the tip of the hook, just above the barb, or just below the barb, I should say, where one, it allows the minnow to actually stay on there and it doesn't rub against the barb, tearing that minnow's mouth so you don't lose your minnow. Two, it doesn't tear up the fish's mouth either because the fish's mouth, when you hook it, stays in that little loop right there. So simply tie this on with an, I recommend a uh, snell knot to do that. You got your hook like this, okay? You're gonna put your line going away from the tip of the hook, like that, okay? So the line's going away from the tip of the hook. You're gonna pull out probably five inches, five, six inches of line, and you're gonna pinch it against the shaft of the hook like that, okay? Then you're gonna take your tag end here, and you're gonna wrap it around both that line you pinched and the shaft of the hook, okay? Do it four or five times. And then you're gonna take, oops, make sure it stays on the shaft of the hook. Make sure it doesn't go above that hook eyelet. I'm gonna pinch it here. Then you take your tag end, you got a little loop here at the bottom of your hook. You can put your tag end through that loop like that. And you're gonna pull the line going through the hook back to the rod tip. You're gonna pull that tight while holding your tag end tight. It's gonna kind of cinch up on the shaft. You're gonna slide it up to just below the eyelet of the hook like that, and then you're gonna pull it tight. And the reason you went the opposite way of the hook to start with is because, see how the, the line going back to the rod is now going towards the eyelet of the hook? So when you set the hook, it uses the top of the eyelet as leverage to actually put that hook into the fish's mouth. And that's what we want. And just simply clip off the tag end, like so. Some people recommend putting the uh, split shot, you know, six to seven inches above the hook. I'm a fan of putting it right at the hook, uh, no different than a jig head. And the reason is that, that these crappie, especially if you're fishing in deeper water, a lot of times they'll run up the water column, grab that bait and keep running with it. And if you have your split shot, let's say your split shot set, you know, six, eight, 10 inches above your hook like this, what can happen is when that crappie grabs the minnow right here, it can run up the water column. This weight is still keeping that bobber straight up and down like this. You don't know you got a bite yet. So when you keep that weight down to the bottom of the hook like that, you guys can see what I'm doing here, just like that. What happens is that crappie, when it grabs the minnow, it raises the weight at the same time. So when you're when they run up the water column, your bobber would be sitting like this, and then all of a sudden the bobber will go sideways. And that's how you know you got a negative bite. So, a little tip there. But there's three ways to rig this bobber. 
I probably won't use another bobber because, well, you got to slip two, two different styles, slip bobbers and a fixed bobber all in one. Really cool setup. We're going to put on some live minnows. We're fishing deeper water. They're kind of suspended all over the place right now this time of year. Uh, these crappie are kind of in that summer to fall transition. So uh, we might do some uh, what's called sharpshooting, but we're going to do it on a live scope. Is just hunt them down and then kind of pitch that bobber out there. Also, we'll probably set up on some brush piles. There are some fish on brush piles today too. So let's get to it. Get this minnow set up. Oh, there's a ton of fish down there. I'm going to show you on the live scope in just a second here. I like to hook the minnow right below the jaw, but not in through the brain, just, just above it. You don't want to kill it. Right. There's a ton of bait fish down there too. So those, those are the brush piles stacked up. There's a ton of bait fish above it. There's some crappie tucked in deep. Deep on these brush piles. All right, there's a bunch of fish right below the boat. We're dropping it straight down. There's some big fish down there too. Those are some bigger fish. I don't think those are, uh, those are definitely not crappie. I'm thinking they're pike or muskie cruising, cruising around. Oh, there he is, got him. There he is. That was a negative bite. He came running up. I thought I saw him shoot up out oh, of that brush pile. We need minnow now. But I'm I'm at the perfect depth. I'm right probably two feet above that brush pile. So these crappie are gonna want to feed up if they're aggressive and there's a fish. That's a crappie though. It is what we're trying to catch. I do want to see what those bigger fish are though. Soft bites. Soft bites today. Oh, here we go. Yep. Now the trick, once you get to the, the stop, give it some slack and then reel through it. Because that way, that way that rubber bobber stop doesn't get stuck in that top eyelet. Because that top eyelet is usually the smallest. See how he choked that down? They're, they're shooting right up at it. They're shooting right up at it. They're hitting it on that negative bite. That's a decent one. Throw him in the lava. He's a good size eater. Minnow bag. I know some of you guys use like coolers and stuff, but Lindy Minnow Tamer. I think it's like 20 bucks. 15, 20 bucks, something like that. You can easily pick out your minnows without getting your hands super wet especially uh, in colder weather. I know it's not fun. Come October, if you're fishing with minnows or November, yeah, you don't want to put your hand in inside the live well or inside a, a minnow bucket. Somebody asked in the comments section, I, actually I was just checking the comments on an older video, what do I prefer to do? Do I prefer to mark a waypoint um, if I see brush piles? Or do I prefer to throw out a buoy marker? Now, if you didn't have live scope, I highly recommend throwing out a buoy marker. Something like this. I'll probably do a full on video of how to set up on these brush piles, but something like this. I think they're like five or six bucks. You can get them at pretty much, you can get them anywhere. Um, but you just want to throw it right on top of that brush pile. Oh, I think you hit it right on the drop. If you don't know, you just simply slowly pull up and if there's pressure, yep, just like that. And once you get to that rubber stop, reel through it, give it some slack. Yeah, they're hitting these things right on the drop. See how deep they're inhaling this? 
they're shooting up the water column. Look at that, he's choking that thing all the way down. They're just shooting up the water column right now and inhaling these minnows. You probably go, the way they're biting, you definitely could go to jigs if you wanted to at this point. See you, buddy. We're gonna stick with minnows. Yeah, he's dead. Didn't do minnow. It's right under the boat. And if your line doesn't go through all the way. Oh, crap. Simply pull up and check it because that means a crappie hit it on the way down. Yep. Yes, it did. It is a lot of fun to catch them like this. You got, uh, if it's your first time out catching crappie, can't go wrong with this setup. I've heard some places the bite's finicky, so if you hear the bite's finicky, you gotta go with a live minnow. <laughs> can't go wrong with live minnows. Might be a pain if you start catching a bunch because you gotta hook up a brand new minnow every time, but. Come on, oh, there he is. Yep, got him. Once you get to that bobber stop, just put some slack in it, reel through it. There he is. That's a decent one. That's a good eater. That's a good size eater right there. Come on, buddy. See how that, that hook gets a, doesn't get the barb in them, so it doesn't tear up their mouth. But I do need pliers because he stuck it good. He stuck it pretty darn good. Well, I think you get the picture. Slip bobbers, live minnows, they catch crappie. So if you're brand new, highly recommend it. I'll link the entire setup below. Go ahead, check it out. There's three ways to make these things work. Right now, getting to that fall stage, you're probably gonna wanna do a slip bobber because they're gonna be in deeper water, but appreciate you watching. Check out Rod and Bob's. We'll see ya.